Back and forth, left and right, yes, but no, ah, uh, huh, huh, ha. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, finally, we're going to react to some vegans again. Today, we have Laura Marie and Teal Scott, formerly known as Teal Swan. They're going to talk about veganism, but about spirituality as well. Indeed, they're going to talk about the so-called spiritual diet. Let's have a look. Hi, Teal. So I'm glad to have you Hello. on uh, this show today. Uh, first, we're going to uh, start by introducing ourselves for the people who don't I am know Bobby. me or, or don't know you <clears throat> or neither of us. So um, I'm going to start by introducing myself uh, briefly. My name is uh, Laura Marie. <clears throat> nice to meet you. I'm a health and lifestyle coach. Uh, Who isn't nowadays? Everybody is a life coach. Uh, my mission and my passion is to teach people how to um, transform from the inside out, how to become the best version of themselves, physically, mentally, emotionally and spiritually. Cute. As adorable and admirable this is, I'm truly wondering, why is everybody a lifestyle coach nowadays? What are your credentials? Have you achieved perfect peace, perfect spiritual alignment? What have you accomplished in your life? What are your credentials? How can you teach others? Most of those influencers nowadays are miserable inside, but feel in the position that they can teach the world. Cute. And uh, so today I am interviewing uh, uh, Till Scott. Till was born in 1984. She was born with uh, a range of uh, extrasensory abilities like uh, clairvoyance, clairsentience. Born with it, you sure? Audience and clairaudience. Uh, she has a very um, difficult uh, story because she was held captive for 13 years in her childhood and uh, that's terrible she has been sexually and mentally abused and as terrible as this is it still explains a lot i personally do not believe that she was born with those spiritual powers i do believe that the trauma led her to believe that she has spiritual powers and she escaped at the age of 19 and now she helps people um overcoming the most uh, difficult situation in their lives and brings a positive message to the world and help people in their day to day. That's beautiful. Let's see how positive this message is. The first question I'm going to ask about uh, the body is about the food we eat. We eat. We all know now that we are what we eat. And I would like to um, talk about um, plant-based diet because we... <laughs> because we are plants talk more and more about how eating animal products is hurting our health and I know that many people depending on the country we live in but it's it's sometimes cultural and me, many people are afraid to take meat out of their diet because they think yeah many people still have common sense they're gonna like Thank protein God. they're gonna like uh, all the essential essential nutrients and um you know, people say, yeah, but we've been eating meat for ages and since the beginning of time. So why we should, why it should be uh, harmful? So what is your answer about this? Because you can see the um, accent is cute. energy, people's energy. You can see through the body. You can see health. Uh, this is something that you can observe within the so-called spiritual community, new age community. People become gods, people become gurus and they're elevated to idols. Now she says that Teal can see auras, she can see the energy. First and foremost, we do not know that. We cannot know for a fact what she can or cannot see. However, we are relying on an outside source, an external source that knows more than us. And now this source will tell us exactly what she or he sees or not. And then we should learn something of it. The kingdom of God is within. Stop looking outside. The problems in people. And so have you already noticed um, something different in somebody that's eating meat compared to somebody that's <laughs> vegan or plant-based or reduced her, her uh, consumption. Probably really, really bad vibes and low energy. Enough 
animal products. Low vibration. <laughs> Tons. <laughs> the people who are eating a plant-based diet have a much higher frequency. And <laughs> of course. A much lower frequency belongs to the people who eat animal-based proteins. They're much more a match to the third dimension, but also all of the illusion that goes along with the third dimensional reality. So that's just the spiritual level of what effect eating meat has. Yes. But it actually isn't true that yes. we've been eating meat since the very beginning. We um, essentially, when we were living in areas of the globe that were more close to the equator, we didn't ever have to take the risk of chasing after something and eating it. Yes, absolutely true. Just go into all of those ancient caves and all you will find are paintings of broccolis and Buddha bones. First and foremost, I totally disagree that we all came from the equator, that we all came from Mama Africa. And then by distancing ourselves from our natural habitat, we became whiteies, right? This is how it happened. I strongly disagree with that theory. But hey, even if we give her the benefit of the doubt and we assume that we all came from Africa, Africa is super dry. Nothing grows over there. People have always been hunting because they couldn't cultivate plants in that dry climate. A great example of this are the Maasai that practice the same traditions to this very day. Hunting would have been something you only did for survival because of the likelihood of you living through, especially with big game, living through hunting for red meat, something like that would be incredibly risky. You would Yes, it would be incredibly risky. And as you said correctly, we did it for survival. Guess what else we did for survival? Everything we survived. This is what humans did. Now we are living in a society where we don't have to take care of our daily survival because we live in flats, we have electricity, we have running water, etc., etc., etc. But every aspect of life back then was survival. Only do that if you needed to. Yes. So what you. Which we needed to. Find is that when we were very first, the beginning of our species, we were eating nuts, plants, roots, things like that, that were very easily acquired and didn't take us risking our lives to do it. Okay, wrong. Yet again, my lady, roots. Back in those days, have you ever seen wild roots? Wild roots wouldn't have delivered enough energy. We started cultivating roots way, way later. We started hybridizing those and we started breeding them in a way that they became sweeter and bigger. Then finally, we are able to use those roots, aka potatoes, tubers, etc., as a valid energy source. Prior, in nature, in the wild, this was completely impossible. And the same goes, of course, for nuts. Do you think they had fields and fields of nuts with which they could have sustained themselves? This is absolutely ridiculous. At best, they would have found a handful of nuts every few months or so. And obviously, nobody in the wild would start eating those seeds. They would plant those seeds in order to grow a tree. Nuts are seeds. No normal human being would have started eating nuts en masse and trying to sustain themselves with them. Crazy. But it's only when we started moving into the areas on the globe and the, all of the um, climate started shifting that it became a real thing of survival. Absolutely fake. Absolutely not true. Pseudoscience. To this very day, the tribes in Africa or any other tropical paradise of yours, people are still hunting. People still eat predominantly animal foods. Those people are still the healthiest. At which we, it was sort of worth surviving to risk our own lives hunting for something. So we evolved into being omnivorous. It wasn't like we started that way. <laughs> Again, even if you believe mainstream scientists and you believe in evolution just as it's taught, the Darwinist perspective, all right, let's give you the benefit of the doubt. The question is, how did we evolve into omnivores? Even if you believe that our ancestors were some sort of frugivorous apes, all right, then they evolved into humans due to eating meat. Yet again, I do not subscribe to that idea, but if this is your idea, your ideology, you subscribe to evolution, then you must praise the meat. Because what this means is that we evolved out of monkeys into humans by 
hunting. And now you want to further evolve by reversing that process? Huh? That is really important because obviously the very if we look at the, the beginning, our origins, what is most natural for a human being to eat is plant-based material, which how? we see. Again, how? How is it the most natural thing to eat? Have you seen babies eating and loving meat? Have you seen babies eating vegetables? They hate it. See, reflected all throughout the body. We don't have canines that can rip through flesh. So we're not like those carn- I beg to differ. Carnivores that come to this planet and can just go out and like yes. tear into a deep- <laughs> Yeah, that is why most of us are uh, very d d disgusted when we see blood and, and, and dead animals. Yeah, most of you modern folks in the cities truly are. The reality of things is this is nothing but twisted pseudoscience yet again. If you look at the human body, you will see that we are perfectly suited to eat meat, to eat raw meat, no worries whatsoever. However, if you look at herbivores, you can clearly see that they have multiple stomachs in order to ferment that fiber. We do not have that. We do not have multiple guts to ferment our food and extract some sort of nutrition out of it. This is why we are not herbivores. Very, very simple. And so you no say- No nail? Yeah. <laughs> So you say it was a no nails because you cut your nails survival thing what? it's something we did because <laughs> when we didn't have anything else to eat and yeah. then and then we ke we kept doing it during the, the so wait a second we had nothing else to eat but at the same time somehow magically we are supposed to eat plants because plants were abundantly available but now all of a sudden they weren't uh, the yes yeah, came a prize human beings are all about achievement yes and when the achievement became the hunt suddenly the meat became more special than oh, the other right. things which were available to us sure and it's not because it is more nutritious right so people go after an activity that you described as very very dangerous they go and try to hunt an animal and risk possible death and then all they harness is basically a banana, right? Just the equivalent of any other fruit or vegetable. This is what they got off the animal. Of course, this is wrong. They got bone marrow. They got the organs. They got the meat. They got the blood. They got milk in some instances, etc., etc. Those foods were prized because they were nutritionally dense. And of course, because they were perfectly suited for the human body i have to laugh because this is so ridiculous and so that sort of specialness is what was bred into the meat-based diet in, <laughs> in most cultures around the globe meat is a novelty item it's not the base of the of the person's diet yes exactly again those cave paintings didn't show what we've been eating right we grew up with blenders back in the day and you can really consider it a a, a you know, primary industrial country when people eat a lot of meat because that is a novelty item. Yes. But what we're what we're missing basically is the fact that even though it's a novelty item, it's not something that we are even designed to, item, to eat. Novelty item, novelty item, novelty item. Wrong, wrong, and wrong again. Novelty items are plants and vegetables in general that we started cultivating. Those new potatoes, those new carrots, all of those plants have been cultivated by humans. Those are novelty items. And of course, needless to say, all of that processed junk, all of those new packaged foods, those are novelty items. Meat is the most ancient food that you can find. People who suggest that meat is the best source of protein don't understand the nature of how meat is digested within the system. A human being doesn't have a high enough acid level in their stomach like most <laughs> carnivores in order to digest animal protein. Yes, exactly. All right, let's test this hypothesis. I googled human pH level of the stomach. What we can see is the normal volume of the stomach fluid is 20 to 100 milliliters and the pH is acidic, 1.5 to 3.5. This is the human stomach. Now let's have a look at dog stomachs. The pH of the gastric fluids in fasting dogs fluctuated with a range of 2.7 to 8.5. Three. Now, if you don't know anything about science, about pH levels, etc., etc., let me enlighten you. The more 
is not more acidic, but the lesser the level, the more acidic it gets. So 2.7 in this case is more basal and less acidic. 1.5 is more acidic, which makes the human the perfect carnivore. So if you were to eat like a piece of chicken, you would only be absorbing about 10% of that chicken. <laughs> if you were going to eat a good source of protein that's a vegan-based protein, something like a head of broccoli, yes, you would be digesting 80 to 90 percent of that. Oh, uh, this is amazing. So probably Teal was browsing the internet too much and checked many of those vegan memes where you can see that broccoli has more protein than steak. What they don't tell you, of course, is that those numbers are terribly twisted. Steak has around about 25 to 30 grams of protein per 100 grams. Broccoli has somewhere around 6 to 8. So if we go from grams, they cannot compete already. And of course, they do not tell you that the biological value of broccoli is super low in comparison to steak or any other meat. And of course, meat such as red meat has tons of zinc and B12, creatine, etc., etc. It's no comparison whatsoever. Even mainstream scientists, yet again, even though I don't want to appear to authority, agree that you won't build muscle with broccoli. Of that plant. And so if you look at the percentage of protein you're getting from a back, uh, like a head of broccoli, as opposed to a piece of chicken, it's not even comparable because of the... <laughs> right. This is why bodybuilders eat rice and chicken. They should simply eat rice and broccoli. They would make much better gains. The fact that your body will take all of the protein in from the <laughs> broccoli and not much in uh, from the chicken. Again, this is terribly twisted. This is absolutely demonic what you see here. Everything is upside down in the new age perspective. We all know that plants come with a ton of fiber. Most of the plant matter is being excreted. This is why vegans have to run to the toilet that much. It is very, very simple. It is indigestible, insoluble fiber. This is why you run to the toilet. This is why you excrete it. However, if you would ever dare to try a carnivore diet, you would see that there is very, very little excrement. Oh, that is because you are all constipated. No, that is not the truth. Actually, fiber makes you constipated and meat is being almost fully absorbed. Yes. Yes. So, Master. Um, for all the people that, that are unsure if it's the same, like plant-based protein are equal to animal protein, you are telling us uh, that this fear should be removed because and even yes absolutely yes this is true even though every single study will show you that meat protein is better absorbed yes i know the vegans are screaming already if you combine the plants then you will have enough protein yes it is true if you combine certain plants the biological value of the protein is higher however with that you're consuming more calories again and of course you're consuming more carbohydrates again more overall food weight more overall fiber you are bloated you are depressed more overall anti-nutrients etc 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 this is unbelievable that it's 2021 and people still don't understand this meanwhile you could simply eat a steak these protein are higher and more nutritious <laughs> than animal protein more nutritious how without creatine without b12 without vitamin d3 how more nutritious much and very much okay there are people who say we should eat living food and not dead dead food you know animals are dead we eat dead dead food animals and are so dead is it but what if you eat raw meat do you understand that, that is the most living food think about it logically if you would have an organ transplant right we have that in modern medicine you take a living kidney and you try to transplant that the only reason why it works is Mm -hmm. because that organ is still alive. If that organ would have been dead, it couldn't have been transplanted. So as you can see, sashimi, steak tata, carpaccio, all raw living foods. Something we can keep in our minds to remind us, you know, this is like living food, so it's good for us, and it's dead food, it's, it's, it shouldn't be eaten. 
If you cook plants to the ground, all you have is dead food. Try to roast and cook seeds and then plant them into the soil in a wait for the tree to flourish. I think that Come on. The, the higher energy level Ladies. you have in any food, the more aliveness there is. Obviously, the more vital force you're going to be absorbing into your body. Because it, obviously, to be a, a living food, it has to hold a higher frequency than those foods which we could consider dead. Which all of our processed foods... And again, if you subscribe to that idea of higher frequencies, higher vibrational fields, all right, then you must admit that raw, living flesh has the highest frequency. It should be and you know yes. it. Yeah, it's lumped in yes. that one as well. <laughs> this is, of course, if we go down this route of spirituality, occultism, we can go back in time and observe the Aztecs or the Mayans. This is what they did. They ripped out the living heart of humans and sacrificed it to their gods. This is where this is headed. If you truly would believe in higher vibration, higher frequencies, you would be eating raw animals and drinking raw blood. And no. What would you Not say plants. to the people who Doesn't say that uh, plants are also, you know, are alive? And if we kill plants, it's the same as killing animals. And you know, we always hear this stuff. You know, the carrot suffers also, and you know, people that are defending this. What, 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 what is your answer? They have an argument. Any time you take life, no matter what that life is, you're essentially killing yourself. And ultimately, human beings are going to evolve to a place where we no longer have the need to take our vital force from something else. But, but yet again, isn't that strange? I thought we evolved into human beings because we started eating flesh. Now we're going to further evolve by not doing that which made us human in the first place. Yeah. Right now, not many of us on this planet are able to maintain positive thought to such a degree that we can utilize our own source stream as a source of energy. There's been a very few people on the globe. There are some, but there have been very few people. This is absolutely ridiculous. Yet again, positive thought. If you keep your thoughts positive, then nothing has to suffer any longer. This is absolutely ridiculous. If you go deep, deep within and you try to find God, the kingdom of God, all you will find is that there is true stillness within you. This is not about emotions. This is not about lovey-dovey, positivity, high vibration. This is about pure awareness. Yes, ladies, I dabbled in spirituality myself. Ooh, should I dare to say that I even had plant medicine experiences, countless of them. And in the end, I ended up a dumb orthodox Christian. The more you know. Let's face facts. It is of course ridiculous to assume that if you have enough positive thoughts, enough manifestation power, then you will be able to live off prana, of mommy earth, just of air and love. This is nothing but a cry for love, but not the real love, not the love of God, which is absolutely still, which is not an emotion. You are seeking that fake love, lovey-dovey. We are singing kumbaya around the fire, holding hands. This is not how this works, not from a physical nor a spiritual perspective. On the globe that are capable of maintaining that kind of mentality that is a necessity if you're going to live off of pure vital prana. Life force yes. energy. Yes. But there it is. here's prana. the argument as to why plants would be breathe in that good ass prana, baby. Better than eating animals. The more animal based life forms, basically, they are the kind of life forms which are intense creators. They're not as allowing as plants. That's why they come down manifested with like an internal nervous system. The second that you have an internal nervous system, which is a byproduct of a desire to survive, you are resistant to death. Okay. So what you'll notice yeah. when you kill an, an, something with a central nervous system is that there's an extreme amount of resistance and fear in the moment of death. You don't see that with plants. It's literally, yes. I'm here, I'm gone. So what you're putting... So you want to become exactly that. ...into your body. Well, <laughs> I should say the suffering that we experience on this planet is a result of, of resistance. So the animal which resists the most suffers the most when it comes to death. Anything with a central nervous system will suffer a great deal in death. Mm. But 
half-truths yet again. I agree that if you resist, you will suffer. Absolutely. If you resist the will of God, you will suffer ultimately. If you resist the isness of things, you will suffer ultimately. The isness of things is, of course, that we are incarnated. We are born in the flesh. And this flesh body has, of course, its own rule set. And so does this earth, this reality, this fallen realm. Call it what you will. Here, as you realized already, animals eat animals and human eat animals too. The longer you fight this fact, the longer you resist, the longer you will suffer. Also, I think it has also a relationship with the fact that plants don't have a nervous system. I mean, exactly. but, yes, <laughs> you think, you know, uh, so they, um, they don't have feelings. Do they have feelings? Yes. Uh, I mean, and yeah. They I've seen sense. a video where they, 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 the plants were singing. People have um, made a machine which was able to record plants and they were able to sing for, for, for an audience and do concerts. It was amazing. <laughs> they did plant so, concerts. That's amazing. Should we feel I want to see that. Guilty when we <laughs> eat plants also? How, how can we have this in our minds? Guilt Why doesn't benefit anybody. Like, is would it, it normal that we, that we eat plants? <laughs> I would think that contributing to suffering really should be something which we're all steering away from. So we're not right. looking to come down here to this planet and create no contrast for anything in existence. We're looking to create the least amount of contrast that we can. Absolutely arbitrary yet again. We are here to create the least amount of contrast. Why? Why are we here to create the least amount of contrast? Then, of course, you go into other niches of the New Age and they will tell you that you are the creator and you are here to create. You are here to let the inspiration flow, etc., etc. So which one is it? Of course, the New Age is not a concise dogma. You have many different perspectives. But once you start poking holes into it, you will see that it crumbles. It has no firm ground to stand on. So... I mean, it's like if we got that nuts, you couldn't leave your house because stepping on a grass yes, blade does yes. cause suffering. Yes. Part of the expansion of this universe is a byproduct of suffering. And so really what I think the spiritual path is about or a healthy life path is about committing to decreasing suffering to the extent where you don't add to your own suffering. Yes, and causing the least amount of suffering. I think that's, that that's the change. point. Yes, but why? Yet again, it hasn't been defined why suffering equals bad. Quite the opposite, it has been acknowledged that life is suffering to a certain extent. Now, all of a sudden, we should start minimizing that suffering. Why? People, people need to realize that, that, that what that means for you changes over the course of your life. So maybe right now it will cause me suffering to cut out meat entirely, but it won't cause me suffering... So yet again, it is all about the ego. Right now, what do I want? If I cut out the meat, then I experience more suffering. But at the same time, I want to reduce suffering in the external world. It's neither here nor there. What is the basis for reducing this suffering? It will make me feel better to cut out red meat, just eat white meat. Mm. So those are the kinds of decisions you make and then pretty soon you'll wind up on a path where it just your the level of contrast you're creating for the earth just keeps decreasing and decreasing and decreasing and decreasing and you don't have to kill yourself to do it guilt on top of a death does nothing but add suffering at least she admits that veganism kills you to the suffering which is why you know the native americans were the ones that had it right or these primal cultures where they they saw themselves as intimately connected to the food they were eating and so if they did make Again, back and forth, left and right, yes, but, no, ah, uh, huh, huh, ha. As you just described, the Native Americans were eating meat. They were eating a meat-based diet. Everybody that studied those people knows exactly that they were eating meat. Why weren't the Native Americans vegans? A kill, if they did, you know, slaughter an animal, then there was intense amounts of gratitude for the death of that animal. Yes. And that's so great. there's some level of universal compensation for the suffering that occurred. Ah, but that's universal compensation. So if I rape a child and I feel good whilst doing that and I'm grateful, then it is all right. As you can see, it is a slippery slope. This new age is nothing but demonic. It's not what we're seeing in the industrialized world. And that's a major reason why you don't want to eat meat today. I know. 
like, you know, these animals are treated like hell and they, we do not have gratitude for them. Their meat is thrown out in I know, thousands terrible. of pounds. Yeah. And how... And I disagree personally with factory farms as well. However, no argument for veganism has been made. For the people that are highly sensitive, for example, myself, and I'm sure many... Yeah, you are a woman. Of course, you are highly sensitive. Leave the hunting and butchering to the men. People, because right now, um, lots of videos are circulating over, all over the internet about the food industry, how they treat animals, and sometimes when you yes, watch... Yes, a lot of slaughter porn that is here to traumatize you. This is why most vegans are female. They see earthlings and go vegan right away. Highly emotional. This, I think it's very good because you are shocked and this is what happened to me. I was <laughs> so shocked. I very good. Eating yes, you've been traumatized. Very good. And now I'm not going to eat my species specific diet. Fantastic. Right away, about six months ago. And now I'm teaching people how to do the same. And the, the ones <laughs> Six months ago, I've been traumatized. And now I'm teaching people to do the same. I'm interested in how I've been in, in a period that uh, six months ago mm. where I was really really feeling horrible about this and I was feeling sick myself thinking about the suffering of animals and how what can we tell ourselves how can we because I, I've had two two reactions the first one was becoming really sad really angry towards humans emotional and how can you do that and how is it possible how can you can, can a person do that and I know there are things that are <clears throat> even worse than humans but this is this is you know we're talking about about food right now and but also it gave me like like the willingness to do something for it <clears throat> you know this anger i learned to transform it and to transform it into strength and to pr promise myself I, w I would do something and i will make everything possible to spread this message and so i turned the anger into strength and i feel in the vegan anger is never a right motivator in the community there is a problem because never some people that are vegan are angry towards towards what's happening oh some people yes <laughs> happening but then they then they keep this anger and they become ang angry people themselves do you see what i mean and yes, then, and I then do. they they scream at people who eat meat and they <laughs> they become angry people and so the message is not you know spread the message of compassion is and love it's not spread so because it ultimately it? is not a message of love, but it is a message of anger, of frustration, of emotion. I think the best thing to do is to work on compassion in and of ourselves towards those that don't live on this same kind of path. Yes. We, we on our path, on our little high horse. To give people permission to learn for themselves. Oh, give those people permission. <laughs> and maybe they'll learn those from our message, maybe eaters. they'll learn from something else. But it's like we, we have to allow people that level of freedom and free will to trust them with their own lives. So if yes, allow them. somebody else says, you know what, red meat's good for me and it's what I want right now, then let them do it and let them learn from it. Because ultimately, if it is more in alignment for someone to be off of red meat and they're constantly committed to being in alignment, which is where the natural process of life takes you anyways, it keeps running you up against blockages so that you can deal with them and improve your vibratory rate. If that's the case, then it's really not it doesn't need to be our our like job, you know. The universe is doing a good job of of the helping universe. people line up with the next logical step. Who is the universe for them? It might not be that being off of meat is the next logical step for someone, or yes. it might be. But but if that's the most in alignment, then inevitably that's where they're going to end up. So either they end up here today, or then they you know they get some chronic disorder way down the road, and they have mm. to get off of meat because of that. And <laughs> <laughs> just a sneaky little laugh there, right? Look how happy she is. They're gonna get a chronic disorder, some sort of sickness. <laughs> if they don't want to listen to us, <laughs> then they're gonna learn another way. Mm, a message of peace and love and compassion. And that would be all right as well. It's just Absolutely. that we got to cultivate the compassion towards the people who don't understand <laughs> things at the same level. Yes. Yes. Uh, otherwise, we've just done nothing but become like, like fanatical religious people that we have an issue with. Those people who think that we have the right way and that everyone else on earth. 
So they have an issue with religious people. That's quite amazing. Why do you have an issue with that, right? If you're so spiritually enlightened, if you truly know the truth, why would you have an issue with religious people? Why would you have an issue with anybody that has a different opinion or perspective than you? Wouldn't you cherish different opinions? It needs to conform. What's causing most of yeah, the suffering on this the desire for conformity. When it's causing hurt to somebody else, it's hard. To be yeah. compassionate, it's very hard. Oh, oh. I know. <laughs> I'm not always in this mood. Like sometimes I'll see a news article and I'll be dancing around the house saying, "I give up. I literally I give up. I know. These people deserve to die." Yeah. That's that's where I am sometimes. Nice. <laughs> Nice. And you there you can see that this woman has been traumatized. Absolutely. This just confirms my assumption. As mentioned, she suffered a lot of childhood trauma and she didn't overcome that anger. Her face is still ridden with anger. She fake smiles. <laughs> yes, I love him. I love him all. Oh, compassion. But in reality, she wants to kill people. She wants those people to suffer because those people didn't get the message, the right message, the truth. What is the truth? To reduce suffering. What is the truth? That we are the universe. Tell us, give us a concise understanding. But there is no such thing. This is all about becoming the best version of ourselves, becoming more compassionate, doing more for ourselves, more self-love. It is a pipe dream. It leads straight to hell. No, and you even you you when you see like some somebody hurting, killing you, you you get this this violence, and you want to do this yourself to the people. Yes. You know, you want to kill the person, and you become a murderer yes. too suddenly. Jesus said, "If somebody hits you, point to the other cheek." But those people still want to get the revenge. They want to kill people because they are still boiling. They are angry angry people they are radiating hate not true love true love is not lovey-dovey true love doesn't care about your feelings true love is not about eating vegetables or meat true love just is it is real it is in the moment and, I, and i'm sure we could we could do it in real life if if it was to defend <laughs> I'm sure you could. Our, our people and so I, I, I've realized I, I should not become like the murderer. Yes. And so it's, it's hard work. <laughs> it's hard work. Mm -hmm. Some people make okay. a difference be between meat and fish, for example. So is it the same for fish? Is it a hierarchy in suffering? Fish are, actually do, in general, suffer less than animals do. So because they live in the water. The water is pure source energy. That's, it's like if you looked at manifested things on this planet, nothing <laughs> vibrates at a more similar level to source energy yeah. itself than water. Yeah. So most often the animals that have the... So you measure the source energy level and then you measure the water level. But let's assume I am swimming in the water and then I'm getting eaten by a shark. Do I suffer less? The highest vibration live in our water-based animals. Okay. And because they live in that allowing wow. atmosphere in pure source energy to such a degree, they don't resist death as much either. So oh, it's yeah. like plants resi resist it the least. Ocean-based creatures, second to that, land-based creatures, the very most. And birds, where are they? Uh, I think birds are probably right above fish, right below land-based yes. animals. So my next question Science. is about animals uh, within themselves. So why do they eat each other? Uh, why do they eat each other? Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Okay. So essentially, part of the contrast down here on planet Earth is the contrast of survival. That's the whole idea of the ego. So that's why the predator and prey are a vibrational match. They're both running and running after with an attitude of survival. So when they come so they are created for each other, you could say. Could it be that animals are created for humans to eat? Down into the experience of that which is animal, part of what they opt into is that level of contrast. But they are on the same path as we are. Eventually, the necessity is not going to be there. And when you compare animals... So the necessity for the lion won't be there any longer. How will the lion evolve out of it? And didn't the lion already evolve into a lion by eating meat? Questions over questions. Most humans, you can't even... 
I mean, it really is not much of a comparison because you will never meet an, a lion that kills for the sake of killing or kills yes. for the sake of yeah, having meat. Yeah, he's not meat. hungry. He's not going to do anything. What? That's the difference. Yeah. And we, we, we kill just for taste. We don't need it. Mm -hmm. Right. So the lion just kills for what exactly? For food, I assume. And we kill just for the taste, not for food. Yep. Yep. Just okay. for barbecue. Thanks. So what you'll notice is if, if an animal... <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> if an animal doesn't um, need the food that is around it, it won't eat it. So that is actually not true. There have been sightings of wolf packs going on absolute rampages through the forest just to establish dominance. They just go and kill everything in the woods just to establish dominance, just to show power, and it seems just out of sheer fun. What is your explanation for that? Oh. You won't find, no. basically, the, the more that the yes. animal kingdom comes into alignment with eating other things, the more the species that are here, car carnivores, basically, will cease to exist, essentially. When we <laughs> rise to the place where... Exactly. And this is why you have transhumanists nowadays planning on eradicating carnivores. But this won't happen through natural evolution. How could it? There is no possibility for it. Lions would stay lions zebras would stay zebras and get eaten very very simple and this is why your transhumanist overlords are planning on a great reset where we all will be super compassionate and loving and eat plant-based but how is that to be achieved if we desire meat so much easy by all of those meat replacements. First, the plant-based meats, and then the next step is, of course, the lab-grown meat. But because this isn't enough to pervert this creation, God's creation, we're gonna infuse carnivores with microchips in order to make them herbivorous. This is where this is going. Of course, it is a humongous ego game. This doesn't come from God. This is not the true love where you just let it be. Quite the opposite. You are interfering with creation and you are trying to twist it, to change it, to pervert it, to literally make herbivores out of carnivores. Very, very sick. We are no longer in a victim consciousness when we all rise, species alike, to a level where there is no more hunt for survival. We've got... Yes, but who can be in a victim consciousness? Only humans that can articulate that. Animals are not in victim consciousness. Animals just are animals. The gazelle is grazing and then next thing you know, it gets eaten. This is the natural order of things. There is no victim mentality. Nobody is screaming justice for gazelles and zebra lives matter. We've moved out of the space of the ego. Carnivores literally will not be a species which is manifested because that will not be the next logical step within the <laughs> that universe. That is hilarious. So if we humans further evolve, then all of a sudden the lions won't have an ego anymore. Do you realize that animals act out of instinct and not out of ego? So we're going to tell a really sad story about that. We're going to say, oh my gosh, all of the carnivores have disappeared. It's the saddest thing in the entire universe when really it's just that they're not a match to the, to the new expansion of the Earth time-space reality. <laughs> so when there are species that are in sure. extension, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Or no, it's not a bad thing at all. Just get rid of all of those tigers and lions and replace it with cows no that is bad as well because of cow farts right get rid of all the animals and stay in your mega cities that is way better <laughs> it has a reason for yes. planetary yes. evolution yes. okay planetary evolution oh yes. we're gonna yes. get resistance on that one <laughs> <laughs> um what about dairy is that she's so fake without knowing it that, is that okay to not the french girl she's just innocent still eat a little bit of dairy if it's organic if it's you know if you feel compelled towards it then yes it's... what we would always want to do is so as long as you feel compelled to anything the answer is simply yes yet again if you feel compelled if your vibrational field is that of murderer just go out and kill anybody it doesn't matter the vibrational field justifies everything it is ridiculous doctrine of the devil trust people's um, internal knowing about themselves what i have <laughs> noticed knowledge. interestingly enough is that humans deal differently on an energetic level at least with like 
goat cheese than they do with cow cheese or yes. cow milk. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Right. Grass fed cows or grass fed goats, the vibration is higher of the goat cheese. <laughs> so I've watched Ooh, that right. happen, which is quite interesting. In general, when it comes to dairy, milk products are designed for one thing, and that's the young of yes. that particular Baby. species. Yes. And so it's not. Good luck convincing a French girl of not eating cheese. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Something that we is really good for us. But if you feel compelled towards it, there's ways to avoid the super dangerous types of dairy. Super Obviously, dangerous. Going from a cow product to a goat product, if if those goats are treated with no suffering, no hormones, none of those kinds of things. Why? Why exactly? Why? Yes. Um, eggs are another interesting one. Yes. Human human be Look how excited and happy they get when they talk about eggs and milk. Just accept that it's your species specific diet. It is created by God. It is supposed to be this way and it is good. Human, human beings actually do quite well with eggs. Eggs would have been something which was very much so in our original diet. This is the raw vegan's cheat meal anyways. We all know that people like John Rose are obsessing over raw eggs. All of them sneak in raw eggs into their raw vegan diet. Because of the fact that it would have been, we wouldn't have been risking death to get them. It would have been easy. Either the ground nesting birds, we would have just stumbled upon the nests and eaten it like that or else. Okay, so now all of a sudden it justifies it because we didn't risk death. So being a coward, not risking something justifies it all of a sudden. So how does that not apply to milk? We don't risk anything. How does that not apply to farm animals? We do not risk anything yet again. We being hominids climb and... Uh, why am I still listening? So that's a very natural based food and our body has an easy time digesting it. Much yes. more so when it's raw than when it's cooked. When we cook eggs, it denatures the protein and it gets pushed straight into the liver. But when I watch somebody eat a raw egg, it goes straight through. Most of it gets digested. You watch somebody digest a raw egg? How? Okay, and um, okay, so the white is only protein, uh, the yolk is fat. Um, what, what would you uh, advise? Like, so, okay, I think there is no problem with eating whites, egg whites. Well, that are organic and what about the yolk is it healthy is it i think the yolk's really good yeah we That's we've got a major it. issue with fats in general at least yeah. she associate it. the fats with fat but we don't understand that your body needs fat it's essential that you get healthy fats yes so really you shouldn't be trying to steer clear of fats you should be going towards the right kinds of fats certain oils nuts have a huge amount of fat Yolks, egg yolks have a huge amount of fat, and that's good fat. All right, so this is good fat. We know for a fact that the egg yolk is packed with cholesterol and saturated fats, which I agree, yet again, is super good and super healthy for you. But you will have to admit that it's the complete opposite of plant oils. Avocados, olive oil, nuts and seeds, that is a totally different type of fat, which is not classically a fat, but oil than the egg yolk at the same time you're of course admitting that the animal protein found in eggs which has a biological value of 100 percent is good indeed so yet again this protein is a totally different protein than the plant protein if eggs are good how come fish and meat equals bad it doesn't make any logical sense and really what fats wow. do is they enable the transfer of molecules and nutrients through the cell wall so they're absolutely crucial for, <laughs> for all yes. kinds of processes within the body so we need to not be steering clear of fat like it's all bad we need to think in terms of good fats and yeah. bad fats saturated fat polyunsaturated fat monounsaturated fat yeah. yes so yet again egg yolks have saturated fat a lot of cholesterol, the same fat that you would find in animal foods. If egg yolks are good, which are the most cholesterol rich things that you can eat, how come that everything else is bad? And um, how many, Amazing. This how is many yolks fantastic. do you advise per week maximum? Is it the maximum or like can we eat one every day or two every day? <laughs> yeah. She's asking her master how many eggs she can eat. How cute. There I would try them. There's not, not a major problem that way. I, I don't every morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, 
it's really hard in the United States to find anybody who offers eggs unless you're raising your own chicken. That anyone that offers eggs that come with true. a vibration that's positive instead of oh, one okay. that's <laughs> out of alignment. So the egg vibration has to be on a certain frequency as well, of course. That's kind of one of those hmm, yeah. benefits versus not so good for you. Yeah. So and what, what's interesting too? She is severely mentally ill. That's very sad. Too about the eggs is. So. Have you ever raised chickens before? No. <laughs> I grew up with chickens. I live in Paris. <laughs> I grew up in Paris. <laughs> I can see you in the backyard with chickens. So the interesting thing about chickens that most people don't understand is that an egg doesn't have to be fertilized in order to be laid. Yeah. So literally, it's like a chicken period. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and so. Yeah, but literally it isn't. It does create a certain level of contrast to take eggs away from chickens. But what's really interesting when you raise chickens is a lot of times they don't watch their eggs. They'll like lay it just like, you know, mm. just like a female having a period every day. They'll just like lay it and leave yeah. it. So there's not a ton of suffering contained in that particular thing. Yeah, but the, what the vegans uh, uh. say is that to produce uh, eggs we need uh, female chicken and so they all the male are um, crushed uh, alive Ye well yeah if we are being retarded about the way that we deal with meat which is the case for our life right now which is why i don't eat eggs but yeah it doesn't have to be you sure that way yeah but it is so that's why so, vegan don't don't eat eggs so yeah that's why i don't yeah, and that, and that's why I I, I believe you. try to in France it's different than in the States. We the quality of our food is better in Europe and indeed. So we are still able oh, to yeah, no. <laughs> we are still able to find little farms and and uh, organic, uh, well treated uh, animals. So you still are, but if the vegan agenda continues at its pace, you won't be very very soon. Bill Gates is already the owner of most America's farmland. Congratulations. <laughs> That, that's the difference. But I know when I'm in the States, I, I, yes. I don't eat eggs. Ooh. It's And even only the eggs area is so big. It's like, and you have eggs of different colors. <laughs> it's like, I don't understand why, like purple eggs and stuff like that. And so it's just, you know, marketing. It's not, it's, yeah, it's, it's all crazy. marketing. So, um, the best sources of protein to you uh, would be so protein in vegetables, in grains, cereal, but always organic. And again, I am here 2021. I will have to repeat myself yet again for the world to hear that grain protein, vegetable protein is inferior. It lacks plenty of amino acids that you would find in meat. How don't you know this still? I assume yeah. in their most raw form, I have oh, you want to eat raw grains? Eat three protein sources that are my favorite. Four nuts. I really love those. My second is chia seeds. Yes. Humans absorb in massive amounts of protein from chia seeds. Broccoli, super high source of vegan protein. <laughs> and the last one would be combining beans and grains. So if you combine like so, none of those foods you would eat raw first and foremost. So you have to cook every single one of them. Then another aspect of it, yet again, if you eat them in high quantities, you absorb a ton of anti-nutrients, phytates in this case, especially super unhealthy for you. Rice with beans, that's a complete protein. That just means we've got all 12 amino acids. That's all a protein is, by the way. It's not like this super difficult equation. I know. We're talking about a complete protein. All we're talking about is that something has all 12 amino acids and you can easily combine. Yes, you can combine foods. And as I said, then you will take in more anti-nutrients and overall more calories and more sugars instead of eating a simple steak. It makes no sense whatsoever to get that. Yeah, so especially you know, in the whole day, it doesn't have to be at every meal or it's, it's yeah. during the whole day. So and let's just start. Okay, so now we are gonna jump to yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, tell me. Well, I was just saying that like it's really important for people to understand that the reason that they're seeing so many unhealthy vegans and vegetarians is because you got to look at what they're eating. Yes. So most yes. people eat a sure. terrible diet in and of itself. It's crappy already. Oh, yeah, because the croissant is vegan, but it's not healthy. Exactly. <laughs> so what, what, you we. take out meat, and that's all you do to become. Yeah. Vegan. It's it's even worse. You're left with sugars, essentially. Yeah. Of course, the body's going to break down and go to hell. But if you're 
Exactly, you're left with sugars. No matter what you eat on a vegan diet, you're simply left with sugars. You're actually eating good food, hearty food, a good substitute, not just a substitute, the stuff humans are really supposed to be eating here, then you're not going to have an issue at all. We are supposed to be eating mass-produced plants. Sure. Well, those will be very healthy people. Yeah, I think it's pretty simple. We just have to go back to what is what is natural, what is found in nature. So, <laughs> we, if we ask ourselves, uh, should we should I eat that? I, we should just ask ourselves, uh, does it exist uh, in his whole form in nature? And that's pretty simple. Yes, 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 yes. Look at her face, agreeing with every single thing that you just said. If we eat something, we should check if we can find it in nature. So, right, you can find chia seeds in nature. You can find huge amounts of grains, nuts, seeds, all of those new fruits, such as bananas, mangoes, papayas, all of those things have been created by men. All of those things are human-made food. None of those things you can find in nature. Mind-blowing! <laughs> That's vegetables, fruits, <laughs> and a little bit of goat, goat's cheese or goat milk. And yes, exactly. Because goats are not domesticated animals, right? You walk around in nature, you pick some chia seeds, you pick some berry bushes, and then you get a little bit of goat's cheese in nature. Yes, we. <laughs> and maybe eggs and... and Sure. And chicken eggs, especially, because they are natural as well. It's not like we domesticated chicken. There's all variety of grains and buckwheat is a good good source. <laughs> buckwheat. Hemp protein and you have lots of... Hemp protein, exactly. Yet again, it's not like you have to colonize monocrop hemp. No, not at all. You can find the hemp protein in nature as well. And just stay away <laughs> from all the refined um, products and, and sugar and... Uh, Aspartame and oh, yeah. sugar substitute. Mm. Uh, I heard yes. you say it's even worse than white sugar. Much worse. Yeah. Much worse. And, and what about organic cane sugar, like the real one, the raw one in organic stores? That's well, obviously, it's going to be better than your average white sugar, for sure. Yeah. If somebody wants to stay on sugar, I would suggest doing that by far. It's just that the body is not designed to, to eat it in that way. So, like, if you were to rip off a sh whole sugar cane and suck on it, that's pretty much the closest you could get to, as close as we could get to sugar. Yeah. But w you wouldn't see... How is that an argument? We can extract sugar, so therefore we can eat sugar. That is not an argument whatsoever. We can do all kinds of things with our brain, which is our biggest weapon. All of these... I mean, we produce products as a result of doing things we could never do naturally. We extract so much... What is natural? ...out of those canes, you know, when we're taking sugar, that... You couldn't get that even if you tried, you know, if you're eating it naturally. Okay. If you chewed on it, you'd probably get, well, like a teaspoon or a tablespoon of sugar. But here we are, like, in an average, like, baked good. You're eating half a cup of it or some ridiculous amount. And it's way too much for the body. And yes. your blood sugar system is not designed to take it in that way. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just okay. think about a question that is so often asked about vegans. Uh, what about um, B12, uh, B12 vitamin? Hmm, what about it? Is it uh, necessary to supplement? <laughs> That's an interesting one because my attitude towards the whole system in general of the human is that if a human comes into alignment, there is no way for them to be attracted to foods that would leave them with a deficiency in any way. Mm. So, unfortunately for, for many people, I tend to, to to align with the idea that this whole you need B12 and B12 can only be found through animal protein is a bit of a conspiracy on the part of the... Um, on the but, well, it is not. A simple Google search on that will enlighten you. There is no bioavailable B12 found in plants. It's not a conspiracy. For the meat industry, um, nutritional yeast is, ironically, a really good source of B12. Right now, ironically, because it is fortified, it is not a natural source of B12. Um, besides, okay, so I'll just go through some. You've got bran, you've got, let me see if I can think about this, spirulina. No, please do not. You're destroying humans' lives. Spirulina has an analog that acts similar to B12, but it does not have real B12. 
like sea vegetables, there's a nope. good amount of vitamin B12 in them. No, they don't. Um, the thing that people don't understand is that animals don't make B12. And but they actually do by fermenting their food through their guts. Plants. Yeah, B12 is actually bacteria. made by a bacteria. Yes. yes, exactly. By a bacteria that is produced during fermentation. So the bacteria has to be in the plant or be in the animal in order for the animal to then convey B12 to you. So No, it doesn't. Yet again, it is produced due to fermentation. This is why gorillas eat their own poop. We should be looking for bacterial sources of B12. And it's just it's a it's a bit of a misunderstanding about the human body that you would have to eat a certain thing in order to get that you know into your system and otherwise you'd be totally screwed because the reality is there are vegetarian and vegan societies all over the globe that have existed that way there are no vegan societies all across the globe another lie for years that are doing perfectly fine they don't have birth deformities they don't everything's yeah, going I think it's underestimating uh, the power of our bodies big time yeah, it's, it's yeah, like big time. Exactly. It's not like all the ex-vegans that we find on YouTube has suffered, even though they ate a nutritionally balanced vegan diet. It's absolutely ridiculous. The body is resilient, but goes only so far. But I think too, and especially if we eat various food, and we should we shouldn't uh, care about oh, this. Exactly. So let's talk about supplements for, for a minute yeah. because supplements, your body's not taking a ton in when you eat a supplement because it's not designed to eat it in that way. Yes. However, yes. it would be okay to take vitamin B12. Like if I was com <laughs> because we evolved. committed to decreasing the amount of suffering on this planet, taking a vitamin B12 supplement would be decreasing the suffering on this planet. And so it would be in alignment for me. We're at a point right now. Sure, and suffer all kinds of nerve system damage because my body doesn't absorb the B12 properly. That is the way to go. That is the right consciousness. We should take advantage of that. Our society yeah. is evolving to a place where we literally can eat this way and be perfectly fine. We don't need meat to survive anymore, and so it is unnecessary. Mm. And, and, so and it's, it's even worse than that. We eat meat, and it's not even we don't need it, it's killing us. That's the first mm -hmm. mortality quote. Yes. And uh, yes. today I, I, I read this, this uh, quote that says, you kill an animal, but then it kills you. And, it, and it's true. It, yes, I mean, absolutely. This is exactly true. All of your parents, all of your ancestors, all of your forefathers, they all killed themselves by eating meat. But it's, that's what happens. Yep. So, yes, yeah. So. And what about protein <laughs> well. uh, powders? I, I, I like... Uh, uh, few All right, guys, but this is long enough. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a thumbs up. If you enjoyed it so much that you would like me to react further to this, then let me know in the comment section and I will keep on watching this. This live stream was two hours long and I made it to 32 minutes. Long enough for me. Guys, if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box. As I said, if you like this video, leave it a quick thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. And as always, guys, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.